Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make spheres in Illustrator and how to wrap them with patterns. Before we get started with this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make two of these spherical shapes. One of them is going to be just a standard sphere, and then I'm going to show you how you can map a design onto a sphere using the same process for creating the sphere, but we'll need to create the design before we do so. We're going to start with the simple sphere and then go on to this one. To start, I'm just going to create a brand new document. I'm just working with a square 600 pixel by 600 pixel document. I'm in RGB color mode and I'll click OK. Now I want to create a circle, so I'm going to select the ellipse tool here and I'm going to hold the shift key as I drag out a circular shape. I can move that centrally into the illustration, into the artboard if I want to do so. Now I'm going to create a fill for this shape, so I have the fill selected here and I'm just going to go and pick up a fill color for it. Well, let's do this sort of orangey color to start off with. And I don't want any stroke on this, so I'm going to disable the stroke. Our sphere is going to be created from a half circle, so I'm going to click here on the direct selection tool and I'm going to click here on this anchor point and just press the delete key because that deletes the anchor point and this is giving me my half circle. With that half circle selected, I'm now going to revolve it to create a sphere. To do this, I choose Effect and then 3D and then Revolve. Now when I click the preview on, you'll see that I get the correct sphere the first time. If you were to do the opposite and remove this point from the sphere, you would get something a little bit different. So let's just see what it is that you would see in those circumstances. If you see this, you've got everything right, you've just got the rotation incorrect. So all you need to do is to change from right edge to left edge. And then you get the rotation that gives you this sphere. Now we're going to have a look here at these options. So if you don't see the options at the bottom, just click More Options. And this allows us to change the shading on this sphere. Right now I have plastic shading. I can choose diffuse shading, or I could choose no shading at all, or I could just go with the wireframe. I'm going to do some sort of shading. We can use diffuse, or we can go ahead and use plastic. Pretty much the same options are available for each. For shading color at the moment, we're using black, but we could use something different. So we could go and get a custom color, perhaps a darker version of the orange that we were using. Here's a darker version of that orange, so I could use that as a shading color, or I could choose any other color. In the illustration that I showed you earlier, I was actually using blue. You can set the blend steps. This is the number of steps that the shadow is being blended using. 25 is actually a fairly low amount, so if you want it to be a little more seamless, you can increase the number of blend steps that you use. The highlight size is the size of this shape here. Let's make it 100%. You can see it gets much bigger. We can also reduce its size to make it much smaller. The highlight intensity is the intensity of this highlight area. So you can make it more or less intense, depending on your preferences. I'm going to wind it up a little bit higher than 40%. Say somewhere around 50. Ambient light is the strength of the ambient light. This is going to be very light, and at the other end it's going to be really quite dark, making sure that this shadow is way more shadowed. And light intensity is the intensity of the light effect itself. No light at all, or quite an intense light. This is the position of the light on the sphere, and we can actually drag it into a different position should we wish to light the sphere from a different angle. I'm going to leave it pretty much where it was. If you are not choosing plastic shading and you wanted diffuse shading, then you could use this option here. Here you only have light intensity and ambient light. If you're happy with the result, you can just click OK. And there's our first sphere. Let's go and create the second one now. I'm going to create a brand new document for this, exactly the same as the last. 
And the first thing I'm going to do is to create the pattern that we're going to apply to the sphere. So I'm just going to click on the ellipse tool, hold down the shift key as I drag out a circle. Now I don't want any stroke on this, but I do want a fill color and I'm going to fill it with a sort of pinky red color. Let's go for this. Now I want to make this into a grid of circles and the easiest way to do that is to use the transform effect. So I'm going to choose effect, distort and transform, and then transform. This is a really handy way of creating repeated shapes. So I'm going to click preview on and I want to move this one in a horizontal direction. So I'm just going to increase the horizontal move and you can see the outline of the original shape is shown here and I can see just how far I'm moving this shape away. Well, I want lots of copies of that. So I'm just going to press the up arrow here in the copies area so I can create multiple copies. So that's a pretty good number. So I'll click OK. That's created multiple copies of my circle, but I want a grid of them. So I'm going to go back and use that effect all over again. Effect, distort and transform and transform. This time I'm told that I'm going to apply another instance of this effect and that's exactly what I want to do. I've already created my horizontals and now what I want to do is to transform this shape to make multiples. So I'm going to click apply new effect. This time what I want to do is to move them. So I'm going to move them in a negative direction. Well, let's just turn preview on so we can see where we're going to. Actually, I'm going to move them in a positive direction because then they're going to move further down. I have a little bit more room further down this illustration. Okay, now let's make some copies. And if I'm happy with that, I can just click OK. So now I have this circle pattern to be able to actually use it around my sphere, I'm going to have to expand it. So I'm going to choose Object, Expand Appearance. And that just creates it as a series of shapes. Now I'm going to open my Symbols palette by choosing Window and then Symbols. And I'm going to drag and drop this shape into the Symbols palette and that just creates it as a symbol. We can map symbols then later on to our sphere. When the symbol dialog appears, all you need to do is just click OK. And now that I've finished with this symbol, I can just press Delete to remove it. And now we're going to go ahead and recreate our sphere. I've grabbed the ellipse tool, dragged out an ellipse by holding the Shift key as I do so. I'm going to select the Direct Selection tool, click on this point here and press Delete to remove it. And then we'll go ahead and rotate it with Effect 3D Revolve. If I turn on Preview, you'll see that it's revolved correctly this time. Now to map the design onto our sphere, we're going to click here on Map Art. There's only one surface here for us to worry about, so we don't have to choose our surface. But here is access to our symbol library, and here at the very bottom is the symbol that we just created. And it's now partially mapped onto the sphere. So what I'm going to do is just to position it over the entire mappable surface. Now if I drag it out to fit, it's slightly elongated, so I could actually make it rounder and squatter. Any area that's outside the mappable surface is just discarded. Now we get a couple of options at this point and really what you want to do with your sphere is going to determine what you use at this point. I'm going to turn on Invisible Geometry because what that does is it drops out the pink colour of the sphere and just gives us the mapped art. But of course it's really hard to see what's going on here because there is no shading. But if I click here on Shade Artwork, you'll see that the light source from the first panel is now being applied to our sphere and it's highlighting certain areas of this mapped art and other areas are being thrown into shadow. If that's the kind of effect that you want, then you can just click OK at this point. Different to the other sphere that we created, it's now interesting for us to actually rotate this sphere. So I can just drag on here to rotate it. And you can see that as I rotate it, we're seeing the applied pattern in different ways as it's being applied to the sphere. We've got these sort of little floral shapes at the top and bottom. And throughout the rest of it, we're just seeing this interesting symbol applied to our sphere. So we're going to rotate the sphere until we get something that we like. 
and when we're happy with what we've got, we can just click OK to finish. Now in the original examples I showed you when we started this video, this dotted pattern actually had a colour behind it. So I'm just going to show you quickly how to do that. I couldn't do it with this particular design because the pink dots and the pink fill for the circle would have just given me a pink circle, so you wouldn't have actually seen the result. So I'm just going to show you how to do that with a coloured sphere. I'm going to size this one down first. Now if this happens to you when the pattern is not sizing down but the sphere is, just choose Edit Undo Scale and go back to Object Transform Scale. Because if we scale it down using this dialog here, we get access to this tool which is Scale Strokes and Effects. What that does is it makes sure that the effects, in other words this pattern that's been applied to the sphere, is going to be scaled down with it. So if I size this down to 40% and click OK, well the pattern's being sized down too, so we get a much better result. So now let's go ahead, let's choose a different fill colour though, so let's make this a sort of, well let's make it this red colour. Let's go and get our circle, shift drag, click on the direct selection tool, select this particular point and remove it. And now with the shape selected we're going to rotate it with effect, 3D, revolve. Turn on preview so we can see what's happening and let's go to map art. Choose new symbol and then just apply the symbol to this shape. If I hold the shift key the symbol is going to be sized in proportion so the dots are going to remain dots. And again here we can use shade artwork and we can use invisible geometry but that's not really helping us since we came here to get a dotted pattern on our sphere. So I'm just going to click OK. Again we can rotate this because it's interesting to us to create this rotation where we can see the elements as they've been rotated around the sphere. We can light it from whichever direction we want to. We can also change shading colours and blend steps and do all the work that we were doing previously in this dialogue here. So I'll click OK so that we can just go ahead and create our shape from that. Now there is one thing to be aware of with these spheres and that is that you get a lot of stuff with them if you like. I'm going to go back to the first one that we created and I just want to show you what you get and how you can pull these things apart. I'm going to open up the layer here and what we've got is a path here. So if I select this and then go ahead and expand it, let's see what we get. Object Expand Appearance. If I open up this until we get to the very bottom, you'll see that we've got two clipping groups here. Just going to turn them on and off. This is one clipping group and this is the second one. And what they are is the front and the back of that sphere. So the one that we're actually seeing is the front of the sphere, but this thing behind is the back of the sphere. Now we could choose to use either of these, but we really only need one of them. And so what I'm going to do is actually pull off this back of the sphere and just trash it, because it's image content that we don't actually need. And having done that, I can move this clipping group all the way up to the top of the layer because I didn't need all those other pieces. Now let's open this and see again what we've got. Well, we've got a group which is all of the little pieces that go together to making this circle. And because I chose a large number of blend steps, there are a lot of elements here that go towards making that blend. So they're all in this group here, and so we do want that group but we can take or leave this clipping path. It's not actually helping us and if we don't want it, we can just discard it. So out of that rotated shape, what we're really left with is this group here. So again, I'm just going to pull it up higher in the layers palette so we're not left any longer with excess pieces that we're not going to use. This is just the piece that controls this front area of the sphere. And you could go ahead and do the same with these. They're going to have exactly the same elements, except with this one, you won't want to delete the backside of the sphere because that's the elements that are across the back of this shape. Let's just go ahead and open this up. I'm just going to turn off these so we can see what we're looking at. This is the sphere that we're working on here, so I'm just going to hide the other one. Let's go and get it and expand its appearance. 
and again we have what we expected to have which is two clipping groups one for the back of the sphere and one for the front of the sphere and if you want this sort of wireframe look through effect then you're going to need to keep both these groups but if you just want this effect with a sort of white fill or a fill that you could create yourself then you could just turn this off and discard it and again we can do the same as we did before and just move these higher up in the layers palette just to neaten things up so there you have how to create a range of sphere effects in Illustrator you can create just a standard sphere with some highlighting and a shadow color you can create a sphere that has a background that's red in this case with a pattern over it created using the symbols palette and this one is a wire frame sphere with a pattern applied to it and again we can have it so that we can see through the sphere to the other side or we can just create it as a single sided sphere I'm Helen Bradley thank you for joining me for this video tutorial look out for more tutorials here on my YouTube channel and subscribe to my channel so you'll be alerted when new videos are released and visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.